All right, everybody, back again with another Vinyl Finds. Um, I will apologize for the misses because um, she's yet to show her stuff from Record Fest and all that, so um, she'll do it, don't worry. So I just wanted to just talk about a couple of things again. Thanks to everybody who's been posting to the uh, 200 subs uh, contest. Derek, Tony, Dwayne, LJ, um, Jonas... Or Jonas, I don't know how I pronounce it, Soft J, who knows, uh, in Sweden. Um, if I'm missing anybody, I do apologize, but uh, still those are coming through. And again, just to kind of recap, very awesome prize. I mean, I'm going to give out a couple other prizes too, so a bunch of stuff I've kind of accumulated, but the big prize is going to be a mind blower, I guarantee that. So um, still have a couple of days left. What's going to run until the, October 22nd, uh, we're going to kind of close it out at midnight on that Saturday. So uh, if you can, link your video to that particular video. It should be the 200 subs one. Um, I guess I could probably put a link here or something like that. There you go. There's going to be the link right here uh, for that video. But I uh, just wanted to, sh you know, if you have uh, some sort of music memorabilia, um, I know a kind of a couple of people have kind of shot me messages and things like that, but um, it doesn't have to be from the 60s or 70s. It'd be cool if it is, but, um, you know, that's not a, uh, you know, a specific requirement to be in the contest. So uh, I want to try to open it up to as many people as I can. So even if you have some sort of like a music memorabilia of some sort, um, Dwayne was showing like his Adam and the Ant thing, which was just, you know, amazing. So, you know, just something simple like that. Oh yeah, by the way, the, uh, you know, as B.B. King would say, the beard is gone. Or that might have been the thrill is gone. I can't remember. Something like that. Anyhow. Um, so just want to show you some vinyl that I've picked up. I uh, wanted to kind of show it off here before I, you know, file it away. So uh, a couple of things. I totally updated. Got a total upgrade here with my Nielsen Schmielsen album. This one's just in the shrink. Just beautiful copy. Uh, really, the cool thing about this was, and I've never seen this before, but this one came with... Uh, came with a, uh, a Nielsen poster. How cool is that? So, very excited about uh, picking this up. Again, our, we needed an updated uh, copy because ours was just beat to crap. So, uh, Sam and I have really been listening to a lot of, uh, a, lot of a lot of Harry Nielsen lately. So, very cool find. Uh, here's another one. So, this may be uh, somebody that a lot of you have probably heard uh, indirectly. Uh, but uh, not really seen any of the solo stuff. This is uh, Jesse Ed Davis, you Lulu, and um, this, of course, is on Atco. Um, Jesse Ed Davis played guitar with uh, Taj Mahal, if you have the uh, Rolling Stones Rock and Roll Circus. Um, he plays guitar with Taj Mahal, and I think he played uh, I think he played him with Taj Mahal and Rod Cooter on a couple albums, so... Uh, definitely a cool guy. He has, a, I think he has about three solo albums or so. This is you know, one of them from 1972. Sorry about that. Um, this one has uh, Mac Rebenack, so Dr. John, Jim Keltner, so kind of the, um, you know, Donald Duck Dunn, so kind of the uh, uh, Leon Russell's in it, so I could keep going on and on, but I'm not going to because i got a lot to show you. Um, but, you know, kind of the, you know, the this who's who of the, some of those session musicians that, you know, did stuff with uh, Derek and the Dominoes as well as... Uh, you know, the George Harrison, the concert for Bangladesh, um, you know, just stuff like that. Did I say Joe Cocker, Mad Dogs and Englishman? I might have already said that. I can't. I'm thinking faster than what I'm talking. So um, here's a really cool one. I know that Nathan Morales showed this a really long time ago. Uh, it's Orpheus. This is on the MGM label. Very uh, kind of a little, a little on the heavier organ uh, psych. So kind of pretty cool. Um, this one was... Four dollars. I couldn't believe I found this, and I was like, "Yeah, hey, hey, thank you very much." So, very cool. So, getting some text messages over here. Um, here's another one that's really cool. This was uh, spot. There was a spotlight in Shindig about this. Maybe it was the, not the the last issue, but I think the issue before that. It's a group called Michelangelo. This is on uh, Columbia. So this is, of course, the the. It's a promo of some sort, but it's still just a standard label with it. So it's the you know the radio station one. Uh, very cool band. Um, stuff is a, a little on the, the lyrics are a little on the dark side, um, and of course the you know the, there's it's kind of male and female vocals, not dominated one way or the other. Which I was kind of talking to Sam about this. This is one thing I kind of like. Um, a lot of times the uh, the female dominated um, albums, I just if, sometimes it's kind of hard to listen to that. There's quite a few 
uh, those groups that kind of came out, you know, they kind of followed in the blood, sweat, and tears, um, but of course have a, you know, had a, a female lead singer, so nothing against the females, but, uh, you know, sometimes I think it can be a little tedious at times, that, you know, if you're, if you're trying to be Janis Joplin and, um, uh, you just can't do it, it just doesn't sound good, but this is, this has a very nice balance to it, so I really like this album, really cool. Uh, here's another female singer. This is awesome. <laughs> so, you know, if, if, if you're like myself, where I just sort of, you know, devour all things 60s, uh, when I saw this, I couldn't believe it. I just had to pick it up. But uh, this is uh, Peggy Lipton, who I'll give you a second to kind of think about who this is. This is really good. It's on Ode Records. Peggy Lipton. Uh, played Julie in the Mod Squad, so, uh, of course, you know, female stereotypes aside, you know, she was always either the, uh, you know, Julie, you're going to be a waitress, you're going to go undercover, Julie, you're going to be a nurse, you know, Julie, you're going to be a secretary, uh, all those kind of, Julie, you're going to be a student, you know, all those uh, female stereotypes of the 60s, so, this is pretty good, it's, it's uh, you know, of course it's on uh, Ode Records, so it's produced by, uh, let me take this here for a second, um, uh, it's it's on Ode Records, so it's produced by Lou Adler. So, uh, you know, you have, you know, obviously the Wrecking Crew is probably, you know, has something to do with it, but um, kind of has a Mamas and the Papas feel to it, but of course kind of like a solo uh, female singer with it. So good stuff. I can't complain. Uh, this one. Now, one thing that I've done and in, in the whole grand scheme of things as far as with, you know, who I am, what I am, what's my purpose on the planet here, um, I've tried like crazy not to use the vending machines at work because sometimes when I'm putting that dollar in, you know, to get that Twix bar, because, you know, maybe I need it, um, I kind of have to stop and for a second I think, you know what, I don't need that Twix bar because for that one dollar, I can get myself a dollar record. So I'm going to show you quite a few of the dollar records that I got. Uh, this is Michael Pinder. This is a solo album. I couldn't pass this up because it looked pretty cool on the cover. Um, it's called The Promise, and I believe it came out in 1976. Yes, it did. So I'm not really expecting too much. Um, you know, Mike Pinder, of course, was uh, one of the uh, founding members of... Well, I don't know if he was a founding member, but he was in... Uh, I think he was, actually. He was in the, the Moody Blues. So this is a solo project that he did, but it's just absolutely just clean the, the record is just totally clean and uh, for a dollar I was like hey either I can get a Twix bar and it can appease me for right now um, or I could get a dollar record so this is kind of one of those ones that when I bought it I was like you know what I'm gonna buy this instead I'm just kinda just as Derek says do the old train spotting and see if there's anybody on here that uh, really can't see anybody kinda jumping out at me right now so if you know anything about this album uh, feel free to give me a holler. I have not listened to it yet, so... Okay, this one again, another one of those ones that was a dollar, which is originally three ninety nine. that was marked down to a dollar. Uh, Beach Boys, 15 big ones, which was, this is the uh, Brian's Back. Uh, I used to have this a really long time ago. I got rid of it, again, kind of going through the Beach Boys phrase, or phase. I don't know if the Olympic rings are on the back, I don't know what that's all about. Um, Rob from Boston, if you know, fill me in. That's the reason why there's the Olympic rings on there. Um, another one from 1976, so I imagine that's probably for the Summer Olympics uh, in Los Angeles. So, um, very cool. So I was kind of excited to see this, and uh, yeah, again, you know, it kind of looked like Carl Wilson there uh, before uh, getting rid of this. I think I'm gonna grow it back. I'll grow it back for you guys, but uh, it was kind of getting out of control. So, <laughs> oh my God. So here's another one: the Allman Brothers, Brothers and Sisters. Uh, this one, of course, uh, I believe has Jessica on it. I had this on CD. I never knew the inside little spread there. Sorry about the light. Um, but uh, pretty cool. Wasted Words, Ramblin' Man, Southbound, Jessica, and Pony Boy. Yeah, I mean, I used to listen to this, you know, the crap out of this on CD. This was just a super clean copy. Um, kind of like the later Almond Brothers stuff. I mean, I know that, you know, the Dwayne Almond stuff is one thing, but um, not really a big fan of... I mean, the, the early stuff is okay, but the first two albums, I think they're a little... Um, I, had the, I had the Beginnings, which was the two-album set of the first thing, and I kind of got rid of that just the other day. So, um, I don't know. I've listened to it way too much, I think. So, uh, here is the Asylum Choir 2, which was Leon Russell, and uh, I believe it was Mark Benno is how you pronounce it. 
But uh, the asylum call it, or the asylum asylum choir number one is really cool. There's that song "Welcome to Hollywood" on it. I've always seen this kind of floating around, but you know, again, for a dollar, I will get that instead of the Twix bar. Um, this is one that I was kind of thinking about. Everybody else in the vinyl community, I'll probably give it a listen, but I don't really. I'm not making any promises that I will probably keep it. Um, I know that's probably blasphemy with what I'm about to show, but if anybody is interested in it. Um, like I said, I'm going to give it a play. Very clean copy. Again, for a dollar, I really couldn't pass this up. But it's uh, Carlos Santana and then uh, John McLaughlin, uh, Love, Devotion, Surrender. So this was, from what I've heard, I've heard this is pretty cool. And I, you know, I've kind of just wanted to seek it out. And again, for a dollar, it's like, if I don't listen to it, I'm sure there's somebody that would want it and wouldn't mind trading me something. So, um, you know, keep that on your radar. All right, last couple things here. Got a nice uh, Bloomfield. It's called a retrospective. Kind of nice to have a, you know, a Mike Bloomfield compilation laying around. I mean, I have a lot of his stuff. He's played. I mean, he's all over the place. I mean, he's done so much stuff. Um, you know, pretty much one of those I've been everywhere kind of guys. But uh, again, this is just one of those things that um, it's totally mint. You know, stone mint basically, or near mint. Of course, it's not mint unless it's sealed. But um, very cool. I love Mike Bloomfield's guitar work. Teddy, big thanks again for uh, he sent me a uh, sent me a Nick uh, Gravenites album, which of course featured some Mike Bloomfield on. So again, very appreciated. Uh, here's something else you don't really see too often, and I was just really excited about this. This is uh, Ronnie Hawkins, of course, Ronnie and the Hawks. Uh, you know, he was sort of with the band, uh, the actual the band. You know, this is on Cotillion, and it's uh, a white label promo. So just could not um, could not pass this up so produced by Tom Dowd I mean I think this is you know this is probably gonna be some good stuff so um, Dwayne Allman is gonna be you know play some uh, little guitar there so this is I'm kind of excited to, to give this a listen you know there's uh, bitter green a uh, Gordon Lightfoot cover so I don't know what that's all about um, will the circle be unbroken of course matchbox uh, he does one too many mornings uh, and of course, who do you love? Which this is, you know, 1970. So I guess that was sort of fit into um, the last waltz with the band. Now I think that might have been. Oh man, I don't even know. Was that maybe 72? I don't know offhand. I guess I can look it up, but I think it's right around that period. Um, 1970. I don't think it was 1970. It might have been 1970. I can't remember. So Thanksgiving, right around this time. So really cool. And last but not least, uh, this one was the, the the gem. Now I got this at the record store. This wasn't you know one of the dollar records or anything like that. But uh, very very rare album, Steppenwolf. And you say, oh, I see that record all the time. Uh, but here's the secret right here. You know this is in full blazing mono. So uh, Steppenwolf's first in mono. You just never ever see this. And uh, I got my little grubby little paws around it. So I'm very excited to find that. So I already listened to that. And it just sounds so punchy. It's just right in the face so um again thanks everybody for watching another vinyl finds in the bag um hope you know anything that you see there again you want let you want to talk i mean i i'm all about doing the trades and all that good stuff so uh if there's a record i have that you'd be interested in let's let's talk so um it's uh good stuff so you know we'll see what we can do so thanks for everybody that has been uh, subscribing all the new subscribers out there hello and welcome uh, you know, take a seat, grab a beer. It's uh, going to be a fun ride. And I have to say one thing too, and I <clears throat> really didn't get the go ahead to, to talk about this, but I think I will. Um, but I'll kind of keep it as, non as anonymous as I can. So uh, as far as with the vinyl community and, and what this has sort of done and, and being able to talk with people and meet people in conversation and things like that, um, today just something just hit me out of the blue. Actually, it was a couple of days ago. Um, I got a message from somebody and they said, you know, hey, do you, you know, do you listen to the pretty things and all that? And, and you know, the pretty things uh, and, you know, asked about a specific time period and all that. And I said, yeah, you know, I have I have some of that stuff. You know, I, their albums are just so hard to come by, you know, in the United States. I mean, I get the reissues, which is, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, definitely always keeping an eye out for the OGs. And, um, you know, I just sort of sent the message back and really didn't think much of it. And I get a message today, and uh, apparently this person is the you know the is uh, the uh, one of the one of the uh, people in the pretty things. I won't say who it is, but uh, that they or actually that is their father. So um, I just thought it was just 
just friggin' mind blowing that this is what this has done. You know what I mean? Like it's you know put me in contact with people and, and stuff like that. And I mean I've you know I've communicated with other people throughout the internet. I mean even before I was on the vinyl community, I was on a message board talking with people, and I you know still check back on it every once in a while. But just seeing that in my you know inbox, and it's just sort of like you know who am I? I mean I'm you know <laughs> I'm I'm nobody. I'm a dude on your on your uh, your computer that talks about records and stuff like that and it's just to me it's just it's just awesome to to have even just a, you know a moment conversation just you know talking about a few things and and whatnot and you know definitely told this person keep in touch and you know definitely thank you for your message and your in your kind words and all that but um, you know the, it's this this is just a beautiful thing and uh, and that's why I guess we'll take it back to you know the the prize like oh my god um, be ready for it. So again, please participate. I'm, I'm not begging you, but I'm just telling you um, this is an opportunity that's probably going to come maybe once in a long while. So I, I'm even amazed that um, I acquired such a thing. So ha ha ha, more hints. So all right, everybody, we'll see you. Have a good weekend and uh, we'll see you in a couple days. I do have a vinyl ma mailbag that I need to get around to. Uh, I'll probably record it and you know post it uh, soon. So and I think the person knows who it is. So uh, for all of you watching, again, be safe, and uh, we'll see you around.